Uh, um, I forgot to mention this the last time. Uh, re your reel should be no longer than three minutes long. It really is a lot to look at. You know, when you get, for example, at this particular conference, I think we've gotten over a thousand reels. So three minutes is about as long as you would want to have it. If it's 30 seconds, that's okay. Just make sure that you put on only your best material. Don't try to, you know, don't try to extend it with everything that you've ever done, just so that you have three minutes. And certainly don't go beyond the three minutes. It's really important that you catch people in the first 30 seconds. So put your best work first. Um, don't, you know, don't put it on like, oh, this is what I did my freshman year. This is what I did my sophomore year. Put your best work on there. Do not put on anything, any, you know. Um, uh, work that's, you know, that you are not super, super proud of because it's really important to kind of, um, to also show people that you understand what's good and what's not so great. I'm going to leave it at that and ask if anybody has any questions for me. Oh, you do. Was if you have experiences outside the industry, yes. like production experience, yes, is set work, lighting work, things like that. Well, uh, you know, it's interesting. Um, that's what I used to do. Oh. <laughs> so um, I was in live action. You know, that was my, my first job was working as a live action prop person. So. Uh, oh. Understanding the entertainment business, understanding film, understanding storytelling, that's all applicable. And, you know, it's its not that different. Um, you know, I'm not going to give you an animation job if you don't know, you know, I've never seen you animate. But you can certainly get a production role based on live action experience. Yes, it's not that its not that different. You just have to learn new, new terminology, but basically it's... it's um, um, you know, it's similar enough. It's still, you know, production. It's still guiding people to do their work on time, on budget, and um, in, in a happy and safe and friendly environment. And that's what production is, even on a live action set. So, any other questions? Another one. What's the most common mistake you see on reels? Oh, the most common mistake that I see in reels. Uh, well, I'd have to say putting putting on um, uh, something that uh, you know work that is just not good enough for the company that they're applying to. So something that you know, like for an animator to have uh, a character kind of intersect with a wall or or kind of sink into the floor or something that looks kind of sloppy that they didn't they didn't just they didn't clean it up just so etc etc because you know there's a level of professionalism that's required to work in this industry and in order to really gain entry you really need to show that you're able to do that whether even if it's in you know like it's you know a, a low polygonal model that you know you're you you know you're, it's your your bouncing ball thing or something like that, you know, don't put all your animation exercises on there unless they're fantastic. You know, unless your bouncing ball ex you know, exercises like Luxo Jr. and it and, and, and makes someone weep because that bouncing ball is bouncing in such a fantastic way, you know. You really need to make sure that the work is really good. I mean, for me, and this is a, and, and I, actually I'll go into an, on another tangent on that question. When you do get your first opportunity for your first interview, et cetera, et cetera, it's very important that you behave in a respectful manner to the business unit that you're applying to. You need to be able to communicate really clearly via email in a professional way. Don't, you know, um, text message or um, SMS people because it's that's just not done in, biz in the business world. It's done amongst friends and peers and everything like that, and that might be part of your life right now. Um, it's very important that when you go to the interview that you come on time. That's actually the biggest problem that I see with some entry level people is that they don't, you know, they just, they, they, they come a little bit late or something like that. Come prepared. Make sure you've done research about the company that you're applying to. Make sure that you're in the interview, that you have good posture, that you're wearing business professional clothing, that you are engaged and interested. And I know it's nerve wracking but try to just zen navigate through that interview and be as confident as you possibly can because you will get jobs eventually and you will be fantastic at these roles. You will all become either 
you know, senior level talent at some point, supervisors, running your own companies, you're going to go out there and kick ass. I know it. So just pretend that you're already there. You know, be humble, but go in there and say, listen, the reason why you want me is because I am fantastic. I have a great attitude and I have the abilities that you are looking for and this is why I love your company. You know, you, you, you really, those are the things that you need to go out there and do. I mean, one of the biggest mistakes I see in interviews is people that are like, you know, they're really, they're like overly shy and everything like that. And we as recruiters, we really try to bring people out, but you can't work on a team if you can't communicate. It's all teamwork. This is, it's, it, production is a team sport. Sometimes you're playing with 40 people, sometimes you're playing with 200. So you have to be able to communicate, get along well with others, um, you know, yeah, it's very different than other businesses, actually, in that way, is you have to, you know, and we do we do appreciate people that bring, you know, uh, have worked on teams before, too, because if you haven't, it can be somewhat complicated, you know, with egos and all that kind of stuff, so. Any other questions? Yes? What about generalists? What about generalists? We, um, you know, it's interesting. Um, we like generalists, clearly, because we like people that can work on multiple roles. Um, but it, you know, production for visual effects, animation, games, it's a pipeline, you know? So it starts with one thing and then it goes to another department, another department, another department. So being a generalist is great, but having a superpower within the, those generalist skills is also very important. And I always ask everybody who comes in for an interview with, with me is at the very end of the interview, I say, what is the superpower that you bring to work every day? And I don't mean like being able to see through the wall or